Hello and welcome back to the Hands-On Channel. Uh, today we're going to continue on in our series about the interruptions in the food supply chain or disruptions in the food supply chain. Uh, let's go ahead and get right into this. Recently, President Trump issued an executive order to keep processing plants open. Is this enough to protect our JIT, just-in-time food supply chain? Uh, what is just-in-time food supply chain, just for those of you that don't know? Well, just-in-time food supply chain, or JIT as it's often referred to, uh, that basically means how much food you have at the store on the shelves. How many days worth of food would that supply everybody in your city or your neighborhood or whatever, how, your county, however you want to look at it. Uh, Essentially, everybody says there's about three to seven days. I would err on the side of three days because even though it looks as if there is an endless supply of food and all of the different colors you see when you go into the grocery store, uh, when you really get down to it, I'm sure some of you guys have noticed by now certain uh, staple items are missing from that equation. You know, uh, Early on, my wife had a hard time finding uh, yeast was one of the things that uh, we didn't expect that to be a hard thing to find, but apparently there was a problem in the production supply line and all of a sudden everybody went out and bought the yeast and then the people that make the yeast, it takes a certain amount of time apparently to make that yeast and they were just basically caught off guard. So a lot of that, a lot of these disruptions you're seeing is just because the manufacturers have never been through anything like this before. Uh, but that being said, let's get into this. In this video, we will discuss some of the recent developments that may help to answer these questions. So we're going to get right into the bad news. I like to start with the bad news because I'd like to get that out of the way first. And I've just been assimilating news articles into my brain that I've been reading over the past three months or so. So we're going to talk about uh, just three or four different things here real quick before we get into the prepping and what you need to do toward the end of the video. Okay, so the bad news. More than 39 million Americans are currently unemployed. Many of them are being paid more money to stay home than they would be making going to work. I mean, that is ridiculous. The first stimulus bill of two to six trillion dollars was spent frivolously. Thanks to all the pork Pelosi and her commie buddies added in, the American people will ultimately pay the price. Not that I support socialist stimulus payments because I don't. I'm worried more about the devaluation and buying power of the U.S. dollar. Hyperinflation is still a very real possibility and one reason you should be prepping now. Buy it at today's prices instead of waiting until you can't afford it in the future. Okay, so let's get into the COVID-19 news. This is going to be a fairly short one because I am no expert on COVID-19 and I'm not so sure anybody is. So let's check this out. COVID-19 news. Many states have reopened and like clockwork, the mainstream media was saying COVID numbers jumped immediately. I mean, the next day they were like, oh God, the numbers are off the charts. I'm sure you guys saw it. Last week they said COVID had a 14 day incubation period, but just like that, they blame the Americans for going back to work too soon. This disinformation would be laughable if it weren't so serious. Fact, the death by COVID numbers have been greatly exaggerated. And this is pretty well documented. You can go look it up for yourself. I saw a senator who was also a doctor out of Minnesota, if I'm not mistaken, who originally had the most credible uh, interview that I saw about that. And if I can find it, I'll provide a link if YouTube hasn't scrubbed it off the internet yet. So the death by COVID numbers have been greatly exaggerated. For what purpose though? I believe it's to test run socialism and destroy the thing that the leftists hate the most, capitalism. Pelosi has introduced another $3 trillion stimulus bill, the HEROES Act, she calls it. I guess if you break the dollar and usher in socialism, you would be considered a hero to the left. They plan to give four grand a month to illegal immigrants and everyone else with a handout. To most people who understand basic economics, this is a direct attack on free market capitalism and the country as founded. Throw in a massive push to vote by mail and never let a crisis go to waste philosophy. Add in some orange man's bad. Let that simmer with the fact dead people always vote Democrat and they just bought themselves the 2020 election. Yes, I'm accusing the leftist commies of attempting to buy the presidency. It's the only way their weak ass candidate has a chance in hell. Meat processing plants have been impacted by COVID. Many have reduced production to provide more space between employees. Part of the problem that we face is corporatism. 
When it comes to large-scale meat processing plants, they are all owned by four major companies. For years, large companies have been buying up smaller companies in America. We now have a few corporatists that control a large portion of the food supply. It's been happening to farms, small farms as well. Uh, you know, now that's not all the fault of the corporatists. Some of that is that the kids of the farmers didn't want to, you know, stick around. They wanted to move off to the city because there's a lot easier living in the city. And we'll see how easy that city living is when it comes time to putting food in your mouth, though. I'd much rather be close to the farm myself. So, all that bad news out of the way, here's the good news, finally. Farmers in Nebraska, Wyoming, Florida, Texas, and other states are selling their products directly to the customers. This is outstanding news, and we need to support this farm-to-table philosophy. I mean, this is excellent. It's the best news I've heard out of this COVID thing so far. And states need to do, you know, you need to do whatever you have to do to make sure your state is going to allow this. Call up your representatives and tell them you want to be able to buy straight from the farmer if your state doesn't already have that. And if it does, you need to go meet some farmers. This is one way to ensure your meat and produce supply is sustainable. Knowing a farmer in times like these could be a game changer for your prepping. If I didn't mention your state and you can buy from the farmer, please let us know in the comments. It may help your neighbors or neighboring states to get on board. Oftentimes, the way it works with these states is they see four or five of their neighbors doing it and they're like, well, hey, these guys are doing it. We don't want to miss out on that revenue or that tax money, so we better go ahead and do it too. A lot of times that's how you have to basically goad these states into doing stuff is it, it takes all the other states around them doing it first. So, all right, guys, let's get into some solutions and ideas. If you didn't see our first video about this crisis, please go watch the last 10 minutes or so and you'll get a crash course in prepping. This time we're going to talk about level two prepping. Production, processing, and preserving your own food. As I mentioned before in another video, Victory gardens are a great way to be proactive about your food supply. I know seeds are hard to come by at this time, but many plant nurseries in my area still have plants to be purchased. So even though you may not have the seeds, you may not be able to get them at your local stores and such, it's, it's mainly just the same deal I mentioned earlier, you know, that the seed companies weren't expecting COVID just like all the rest of us. So they got caught with their pants down and I'm sure there's more seeds coming, but it may not be in time for this year. So that being said, you may want to go, to go down to your local nursery and greenhouse and pick up you know, some tomato plants, whatever you can get a hold of at this time. Gardening does require some hard work and skill, but many resources are available online or at your local library, if your library is open. Potatoes can produce a lot of food. You can take a store-bought potato and make it sprout. I usually cut each potato in halves or thirds. Each piece that has a sprout will produce a potato plant. And again, potatoes, man, they just put off a lot of potatoes. Pound for pound, I think potatoes are probably the best crop to get into if you want results and you want to put a lot of food on the table. Livestock. Chickens are a great way to get into livestock, and they're one of the easiest animals to deal with. Many breeds are dual-purpose birds. That means they are good layers and good meat birds. Processing meat will be challenging if you've never done it before, so I suggest doing some more research before you attempt it. Uh, you can get with a farmer, you can get with one of your neighbors that maybe knows how to do it, or one of your older relatives that have done it before. Uh, there's, there are some tricks to it, to getting the feathers off and to getting it done right. Uh, but once you get over it, once you get over the squeamishness of it, you'll see where your food comes from, and that's the most important thing. Many books and videos are available for meat processing. And speaking of books and videos and stuff like that, books especially. Right now, we all take for granted the fact that we can get on Google or get on Bing or whatever your favorite you know, web search tool is. You can get on there and you can search for anything. You can get on YouTube and find videos like these and others that will help lead you in the right direction. But what if the power goes off? Many commenters, after my last video, mentioned that they thought the next big part of the plan although I don't agree with that, that there's any master plan necessarily going on, but these guys did, and they thought the next part of the plan was going to be the power was going to go off. So once everybody filled their freezer up with meat, one guy said, then they'll come and shut the power off. Well, I don't know. They don't know me, I guess, because I have a generator. I actually have a couple of generators, and I've got several five-gallon gas cans full of gas out there. Is that going to last me forever? No. But 
just last weekend, we actually had a storm come through, knocked out the power for like 12 hours or so. And I ended up having to fire up the generator. I was glad I had it. So, uh, maybe they're not thinking far enough ahead. I don't know, but you know, there's always a way to keep your stuff going and keep your food cold and keep it preserved. So have a backup plan, have a solar generator or a gas power generator or something that you can protect all of your cold and frozen foods with. Rabbits are another animal that are relatively easy to take care of and they put a lot of meat in the freezer. Their scat also makes excellent compost for your garden that is ready to use instantly. You don't have to wait around for rabbit scat like you do with, uh, uh, you know, cow manure and chicken manure, stuff like that. Rabbit manure is ready to use. You can put it directly on your garden. It will not burn it up. At least that's what I've read in the past. So that makes them an excellent garden that, you know, will kind of work uh, and be mutually beneficial for your garden. And the things and scraps that come out of your garden, you can probably feed some of those to your rabbits and to your chickens. Uh, but one warning, if you're going to have chickens that free range, you have to keep them out of your garden because they'll get in there and poke a hole in every one of your tomatoes. They'll eat your squash. They'll eat everything that you like to eat. So uh, if you're going to be smart about it, you're going to want to make sure and keep your chickens. you got to keep them separated. Okay, so canning is an old American tradition that we need to revitalize. Canning is one of the best ways to preserve your food. It will require some canning equipment and supplies to get started. You will need to follow the guidelines for safe canning practices. We wouldn't want anyone to get sick from our own canned foods or hurt. I mean, you know, you're dealing with a pressure cooker or a big deep pot and a lot of hot, steamy, hot stuff. So you got to, you know, use some common sense when you do it. Meats, vegetables, and fruits can all be preserved with canning. The best part about preserving your food this way is it doesn't even require refrigeration until you open it, of course. Like most everything else, it just needs to be stored in a dark, dry, cool place. And again, that's as long as you don't open it up. Once you open it, it has to go in the refrigerator. That's pretty much everything uh, that's like that anywhere. Uh, maybe, maybe the only exception to that would be peanut butter or something like that, but I don't think you're going to be making that. Dehydrating is another great way to preserve your food and all your hard work. You will need to buy or make a dehydrator. There's lots of videos on YouTube where you can make a dehydrator. It's pretty simple. You can make jerky, dried fruit snacks, and it even works on some vegetables. In fact, recently my wife did an experiment with some spinach that we grew out in the garden. And it was excellent. It kind of made it taste like uh, chips or something after it was done. It was kind of, you know, you wouldn't probably want to breathe any of it in because you'd probably choke on it. But if you just bit it, you know, it might have been good garnish on a salad or something like that. Just to give it a little bit of different consistency. Our forefathers knew how to survive. They didn't call it prepping, they called it living. The folks that lived through the Great Depression knew how to do all the things I mentioned above. They recycled everything that they could repurpose. They used flower sacks to make dresses for the girls. Men would even recycle nails from old barns they had to rebuild. Nothing went to waste. I advise you to start shifting your minds to a Great Depression philosophy. America has become a consumer-based disposable society. Everything now is disposable. One time use and then it goes into the trash can. We got to break away from that. At my house, we reuse plastic and paper bags that we get from the grocery store. I use the paper bags for bags and for other things like in the chicken coop, I line the floor with paper bags before I put the wood chips down. That helps when I clean out the coop. I can roll up the litter and the scat, thus making it easier to clean. Another great use for paper bags is masking off a painting project, or you could pick up yard debris and then you can burn the entire paper bag along with the debris. You can lay them on the floor before you do a messy job like changing the oil. I reuse the plastic bags for can liners in our small bathroom trash cans. They are great for wrapping up used oil filters or any other greasy, oily part. This keeps my hands and shop much cleaner. The point of all this is to think outside of the box. We have been conditioned to be perfect consumers. Go buy anything you need at the store right then, at that instant, instant gratification. Well, times are a-changing. They're going back into more of a Great Depression philosophy, and I advise you, uh, you can break the mold, uh, but it's going to require a new perspective for some of you. So guys, hopefully this was helpful for you, and if you would, please hit me up in the comments with any suggestions you may have that things that I may have missed in the video along the way. I'm not perfect here and nor do I think we have a perfect system. The only reason I'm doing these videos is because my wife and I have been prepping for 
Oh, good God, like almost 20 years now. So we do have a little bit of experience in the matter. Uh, if you would, hit me up in the comments. Let me know what you think. Hit the thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. And until then, guys, we'll see you next time.